Okay, in this video, we're going to look at trigonometric identities. So here we've got an identity. It says cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. It's an important trigonometric identity that we need to know. We need to remember this. So we need to know cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. I'm going to show you a quick proof of it first. So if we've got a right angle triangle here, the hypotenuse is the longest side, opposite is opposite the angle, and the adjacent is in between the angle and the right angle. And from Pythagoras, we know that the adjacent squared plus the opposite squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. Now, if we take this, and we divide everything, divide through everything by the hypotenuse squared. So divide each term by the hypotenuse squared. So what does that give us? We've got here we've got adjacent over hypotenuse squared. Here we've got the opposite over the hypotenuse squared. And here we've got the hypotenuse over the hypotenuse squared. The adjacent over the hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse is the same as cos theta because cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine theta is the opposite over hypotenuse. So we can change adjacent over hypotenuse to cos theta I put cos theta squared. Opposite over hypotenuse, we're going to change to sine theta. So sine theta squared. And hypotenuse over hypotenuse, well, that's 1. So I'll put 1 squared. Now we write cos theta all squared as cos squared theta. We write sine theta all squared as sine squared theta and 1 squared is 1. So there we go, we've got our identity cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So here we're going to look at a question that uses that identity. So we've got sine squared theta plus 9 cos squared theta plus 2 cos theta is equal to 2. And we're going to solve it for theta between 0 and 360 degrees. So we're going to use this identity, so we're going to use cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, and we need to make it easier. So it's going to be a quadratic, and to solve it we need it to all be in terms of cos, or all be in terms of sine, so we can solve it. So we need to either get rid of the coses or get rid of the sines. So the easiest thing to do, because I've got two cos terms here, only one sine term, and the sine term is already squared, which makes it easy to use our identity, that's going to be the easiest thing to get rid of. So we're going to eliminate this term, the sine squared theta, and we're going to do that by substituting in what sine squared theta is equal to. So if I subtract cos squared theta from both sides of the identity, so sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta. So I can substitute in for sine squared theta 1 minus cos squared theta. So I'm going to change sine squared theta to that, which is going to give me 1 minus cos squared theta plus 9 cos squared theta plus 2 cos theta equals 2. Now, I'm going to collect the like terms. So I've got minus 1 cos squared theta plus 9 cos squared theta. So that's going to be 8 cos squared theta plus 2 cos theta. And I need to make it equal to 0 to solve it. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So 1 take away 2, that's minus 1. 
So now I've got the normal quadratic equation, so I could use the quadratic formula, or I could factorise it, or I could complete the square, whichever method you want to use. I'm going to factorise this. So I've got the only thing that multiplies to make 1 is going to be 1. And I'm going to have to make 2 cos thetas. I'm going to have 4 cos theta and 2 cos theta. And I want the 4 to be positive, the 2 to be negative. There's lots of ways of factorising. If you use a different method, that's okay as long as you get the same answer. If you use the quadratic formula, that's okay as long as you get the same answer. So the answer should be cos theta equals a quarter, because that's what makes this first bracket zero. And cos theta equals minus a half, because that's what makes the second bracket zero. So we need to solve now. So we need to make sure the calculator is in degrees, because we need the answers between zero and 360 degrees. And to get theta by itself, we're going to shift cos. So shift cos one quarter first. So we type that into the calculator, shift cos one quarter. And we should get 75.5 degrees to one decimal place. To get the next answer for cos, we do 360 minus answer. So 360 minus the answer. 284.5 so there's two answers now we're gonna work with this cos theta equals minus a half so to get theta by itself shift cos minus a half this time and that should give you 120 degrees and 360 minus answer, well that's 240 degrees. So we've got four answers there. We can't get any more answers because if we plus 360 or take 360 from any of these, it go out of the range we wanted. So there's our four answers. Okay, here's another question. You can pause the video and give it a go if you like, or you can just carry on watching. So we've got two cos squared x so in x this time this should say x doesn't make a difference to the question 2 cos squared x plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0 and we want the answers for x between 0 and 2 pi so we're going to be in radians and we're going to use our identity again cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1 to solve this equation. So what's easier to get rid of? Is it going to be the cos or the sine? Well, the cos is squared, so that's going to be easier to get rid of. We could get rid of the sine, but it would be a lot harder. So the easiest thing to do would be to substitute in for cos squared x. So cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So we can just substitute it in. 1 minus sine squared x instead of cos squared x. And then we're just going to simplify. So we're going to expand the bracket. So multiply it by 2. So that gives me 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0. Collect like terms. So we're going to have minus 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x. 2 minus 3 is minus 1 equals 0. I don't like the first term being negative, so I'm going to multiply everything through by minus 1. So that will give me 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x plus 1 equals 0. And again, we've got the familiar looking quadratic equation. So we could factorize or use the formula. Again, I'm going to factorize this because I can. 
So 2 sine x in one bracket, sine x in the other. We need to make a minus 3, so minus and minus. So that means what makes the first bracket 0, so sine x is a half. Or what makes the second bracket 0, sine x is 1. So to get x by itself, we're going to shift sign, making sure the calculator is in radians. So shift sign a half, and that's going to be shift sign a half, which is going to be one sixth pi. And to get the next answer in for sign, we do pi minus answer. So that's going to be five sixths pi. Both those answers are within the range we wanted, and I can't get any more, because if I add 2 pi to these, they'll be over 2 pi. So there's two answers there, and then we're going to shift sign 1. So shift sign 1, that should give us half pi. And interestingly, if we did pi minus answer to try and generate another answer, we're going to get half pi again. The reason is, do a quick sketch. So here's the sine wave. Sine is only one at one point. It's the maximum, it's the peak. So it's only one at one point in a 360 degree cycle. So we've only got one answer. So in total, we've got three answers for this. We've got one six pi, half pi and five six pi. Okay, here's another trigonometric identity that we need to know. This is sine theta over cos theta equals tan theta. I'm going to show you a quick proof first. So if we start with sine theta being opposite over hypotenuse, and cos theta being adjacent over hypotenuse, and of course tan theta being opposite over adjacent. So if we take sine theta and divide it by cos theta, that means we've got opposite over hypotenuse divide by adjacent over hypotenuse. If we're dividing a fraction, we can change it to a times and flip over the second fraction. And then we're going to cancel off the hypotenuse, which is just going to leave us with opposite over adjacent. So, which is tan, which is tan theta. So if we divide sine theta by cos theta, we get tan theta. So sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. Now we're going to look at an equation where we're going to use that identity. So we're going to use tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. So we're going to solve this uh, for sine theta equals 3 cos theta for theta between 0 and 360. So degrees. How can we use this identity? We just need to divide through by cos theta. So if you divide both sides by cos theta, on the left side, you've got 4 sine theta over cos theta, and sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. So that's 4 tan theta. And on the right side, you've got 3 cos theta over cos theta, and cos theta over cos theta is 1. Anything divided by itself is going to give us 1. So we've just got 3 left on the right side. Now we want to get 10 theta by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by the 4. So 10 theta equals 3 quarters. And to get theta by itself, we do arctan. So shift tan, 3 quarters. So in the calculator, shift tan, 3 quarters. 
and that should give us 36.9 to one decimal place. And to get the next answer for tan, we just add on 180, and that's 216.9 degrees. So we've got two answers between 0 and 360, and there are our answers. Okay, so here we've got another question using the same identity. So we're going to use the identity that tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. So we've got a question that says 5 sine theta minus 4 tan theta equals 0. And we need the answer between 0 and 2 pi. So we need to make sure I calculate in radians. So in this instance, we're going to substitute in for tan theta. So we're going to change tan theta to sine theta over cos theta. There's nothing else we can do. So that's going to be where we start. So we've got 5 sine theta minus 4 sine theta over cos theta equals 0. Now we're going to multiply through by cos theta. We're going to get everything on the top. So that's going to give us 5 sine theta cos theta. If I multiply by cos theta, I cancel out the fraction. So that's just 4 sine theta, and 0 times cos theta is still 0. Now, it would be tempting here to divide through by sine theta and eliminate it, get rid of it. That isn't what we want to do. That would lose us some answers. So instead of dividing through by it, we're going to factorise it. So we're going to take sine theta outside the bracket which is going to leave us with 5 cos theta minus 4 inside the bracket. So what are the answers? We can have either sine theta equals 0 or cos theta equals 4 fifths. So now we're going to, to solve, we're going to shift sine and shift cos, so theta equals shift sine of 0. So shift sine 0 gives us an answer of 0. And to get the next answer for sine, we do 180 minus answer, or pi minus answer in radians even. So pi minus 0 is pi. Are they both in the range we wanted? They aren't because we need theta to be bigger than 0 or less than or equal to 2 pi. So we want this one. We're happy with this. We're not happy with this. So we're going to add 2 pi onto it to get the next answer, which will be 2 pi. So we've got pi and 2 pi for sine theta equals 0. We've got two answers here. Now we're going to work with this one. So theta is going to be shift cos four fifths. So shift cos four fifths. And we'll give our answers to three significant figures here. So that's 0 0.644. Now we're in cos. So to get the next answer, we're going to do two pi minus answer. And to three significant figures again, 5.64. So we've got four answers here. 0 0.644, pi, 5.64, and 2 pi in the range you wanted.